in November of last year, we were able to make our final payment on the mortgage after four years of uh, extra payments uh, on our original mortgage, which was $195,000 when we got the home. It's nice to just talk about the wins, um, but if you don't give the details, I think that's I think that's where people learn. So that's that's what I'm all about. I want to help people to you know achieve the best for their family. Welcome to the Couple Money Podcast, the show where we share stories and advice on building up your marriage and wealth together. I'm El Martinez. Support for this podcast comes from Jumpstart Your Marriage and Your Money Masterclass. This course is designed to help you two get on the same page with money, dump your debt faster, and get you on the path to financial freedom. Sign up for the class today and get lifetime access. Just head over to couplemoney.com slash jumpstart. What would you do if you owned your home free and clear like Andy does now? With no mortgage payment, what options would open up for you? There's a good chance if you have a mortgage right now, you're listening and you'd love to get rid of it. But the idea of paying off such a huge amount seems almost impossible. Forget about paying it off in five years. You may struggle to even see a way to reduce it in half. Right now, the median purchase price of a home here in the United States is $235,000 with about 10% down. Now, if you live in the D.C. area, you're looking at a higher price, $400,000, with my buddies in Cali close behind at around $350,000. Not cheap, probably the biggest purchase you'll make. Which is why I asked Andy to come on. He's an awesome guy, really excited to help couples get closer to their debt-free goals. We both know that not everyone can replicate everything that Andy and his wife Nicole did because we all have different circumstances. But there's a lot to their process that we could learn from, and it could make all the difference with you and your home. Andy joins me in this episode, and we discuss why they were so adamant about knocking off their mortgage so fast, steps that were crucial to paying off this debt, and tools to help you become debt-free and mortgage-free faster. If you are focused on paying off your mortgage in five years or less, you're not going to make the typical choices that most couples do. It takes a real commitment to stay focused on this goal. And for Andy and Nicole, this was a step in their journey, a very personal one. Well, uh, for for the mortgage, uh, when we got together originally, paying off the debt, our big why for that was, hey, wouldn't it be great, Nicole? Um, And she was obviously in agreement. wouldn't it be great if you could stay at home and raise our children once we're debt free? And that, that really got her excited about it. Um, and it got me excited about it too, because for her to be able to spend that time with our kids and, you know, be there for them after school and things like that, that was very important to her. She did like her career, but not enough to swap that for, for staying at home. And obviously it really depends on who you are as a mother. I have some ladies that I work with at my career that, that see my wife's situation. They're like, that's nice that your wife does that, but man, I don't want to stay at home with my kids all day. <laughs> so it's all personal preference, right? You know, your why is personal for you. And then for the mortgage, I, you know, for me, I think it's, uh, I think it would be really incredible when we were getting together for, for the why to say, what if we never had to make payments again to anybody and such a large payment, you know, and for, for us, um, when we bought that house, it was a larger purchase for me. A $350,000 house is pretty, you know, pretty yeah. big. So when we saw that price tag, I'm like, sweetheart, I'll, I'll do this. But man, I don't want to be paying a mortgage for 30 years and feel that, you know, weight on my back. Like, hey, I have to keep earning like, you know, my, yeah. my, my income for a long period of time and I better keep performing. <laughs> you know, I don't stop selling Andy, you know, uh, but yeah. If I didn't have the mortgage, maybe the pressure on my shoulders would feel a lot less. And yeah, I mean, um, my health is good and I'm, I have good ability at work to keep earning. But yeah, my ma- major motivation was, you know, a stress thing. I think mo- mostly stress and emotion to not have that monkey on my back uh, for 30 years. So 
you were able to do it in four. And that was, that was a big why for us. And then for her, I think, I think she, she made, she wanted to, you know, feel that less stress with me. When you bring your stress home from work, uh, it's not just you being stressed. It's your, it's your spouse as well. Um, I like my job, but yeah, it's high pressure. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I need to continue to perform or the income's not there. So for me, it was it's emotional. And, and for her, she wanted to support me, which is great. When they bought their home, Andy and Nicole were very intentional with how they were going to do this. The down payment and the mortgage terms were built around this idea of paying off the house sooner rather than later. Between a 30-year and a 15-year, there are obvious differences, right? Your payment's going to be lower with a 30-year, mm-hmm. but with a 15-year, you're throwing more at the principal each month. You're forcing yourself to pay this thing down as quick as possible. So I wanted that pressure. <laughs> that sounds, yeah. sounds crazy. <laughs> I wanted that pressure because mm-hmm. we wanted to pay this thing off fast. We didn't want to live with it forever And again, deal with that stress of having a mortgage payment for your whole lives. Um, So we chose the 15 year for the added um, acceleration of paying Mm -hmm. off the mortgage quicker, but also you get a break on the interest rate. If you want to be a little bit more aggressive between at the time, it was about a a percentage difference between a 30 year and a 15 year. So we are able to- yeah, that adds up. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, over, I think I did a calculation on one of my posts. If we were to go through the whole term mm-hmm. of the loan, it would be a, about a hundred thousand dollars savings in interest between the 30 year and the 15 year. So that calculation alone, even though we didn't live the full term, yeah, uh, was, was reason enough for me <laughs> to not send more money to the, more money to the bank. You don't want to send them an extra, like, well, I think you came up with like 92,000. You don't want to yeah. send them- I'd like to keep that. I I worked hard for it. Another key decision they made was keeping the mortgage payments at a certain level. It's a rule of thumb that we've used and found tremendously helpful. It means for us less stress when it comes to owning a home. Yeah. uh, When I bought my first house, uh, I did the opposite. I was very house rich and super poor. I was 22 and had no idea what I was getting into. I essentially bought a home with a mortgage that was 60% of my income. So How? <laughs> I, I don't know, you know, and, and, and shame on me for not understanding what I was getting into. Yeah. Um, but I, I guess, oh man, I really hope that there's more teachers in the mortgage industry than there are salespeople in the future. And I know there has been a lot of changes from 2004 to 2018 we are in yeah. now. But still, I mean, for me to get into that product at the time, uh, it was just not not something I should have been in at 22. So I wanted to flip that on the opposite side. And Mm -hmm. and I found through some research that that's a good barometer to still allow you to live your life and have fun and enjoy things that make you happy without just saying, great, I got the house. Let's not do anything for the next 20 years because we can't afford it. You know, or, or, or you get the house and it's a a big part of your income, but then you got to furnish it too. You have to fix it. I remember getting the house when I was 22 being like, what, what is this gas bill? I have to pay gas every month or, oh, this thing, like air conditioning needs repair. What is all, you know, so home ownership is expensive and I don't think people understand. It's not just the purchase price. Mm -hmm. It is all of the maintenance and repairs and the updates that you want to do, the things that you want to buy. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it costs money. So it's not just the mortgage payment, but you got to think about the other costs. So 25% worked well for us. And um, I think it's a good barometer for folks. After taking these steps, it made it much easier to knock down the mortgage. And even though a 15-year mortgage is fantastic, Andy and Nicole saw it differently. They were focused on getting rid of the house even faster. That meant they had to make drastic changes and look for big wins. First thing they did was examine all of their expenses. So yes, we set a date. We said, hey, we're going to get this big house that mm-hmm. you know is essentially a type of house that our parents would have mm-hmm. after we've grown up and, and been alive for a while. So if we're going to do something like that so serious, then let's be as serious about paying off the mortgage. And we both agreed and it was something that we were excited about. And yeah, we set a date for, for five years. Uh, with that, there was a little sacrifice um, yeah. you know, um, because in order to pay off a mortgage in five years, you got to pay it pretty aggressively. So all of the extra you know, that we mm-hmm. had, Essentially, we were living on 50% of our income at that time. So we yeah. made that decision consciously 
after we decided to pay off our consumer debt in 2011. So pretty much from 2011 till today in 2018, we've been living on 50% of our income. It's just something we're used to. It does take a lot of effort because you're going to be thorough and you're going to review all your expenses. And again, we're looking for big wins. So there are two starting places I would recommend. The first are your subscriptions. Yes, I'm looking at you, Cable. But really, we tend to spend a lot more when it's a small monthly fee. For us, we looked at our expenses and saw that we could save a lot with our smartphone plans by switching. For example, I have two lines with Republic Wireless, and last month I paid about $45 for both, and I've been really happy with their service. We have friends who switched to Ting and Google Fi, and they found no sacrifice in their coverage while still getting a better deal. And those box subscriptions, they're really popular right now. They can be another way to save. I'm not saying cut out all of these, but ask yourselves, are we still enjoying this? Are we still getting a value? If so, keep it. If not, though, shop around, see if you can get a better deal, or eliminate it. The other expense this one's usually one of the bigger ones, is your food bill. Andy personally saw how much they could save by being savvier shoppers. We went from $900 a month, and that might seem a lot for people for, with a family of four. We just weren't, we weren't uh, being intentional about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, $900 a month for groceries to $600, or even a little less than $600. Just, so just yeah. last year alone, $3,600 in savings just from groceries, and it's not that different. I mean, it's no, the it layout is different, and that's about it. But we, lo- yeah, we love Aldi. <laughs> But Andy and Nicole didn't get to where they are by simply slashing their expenses. We, you can only save so much, right? You, you, mm-hmm. the, the bottom of the barrel is zero and the income limit is, you know, sky's the limit, right? So we, we started to think, what are, what are some easy ways that we can continue to increase our income and live the life we want? So for us, uh, we had, you know, accumulated a lot of stuff over the past couple of years in our marriage that we really didn't need anymore. So we said, hey, let's let's kind of walk around our house and we're kind of getting into this sort of minimalist kick too. I know it's been popular over the past couple of years and we like that. My wife likes to design with a minimalist fashion around the house, less clutter, makes her feel less stressed personally too. So for us, we started walking around the house being like, Hey, you know, could we sell that? Could we sell that? Facebook marketplace is just like awesome because you can put things up there and your neighbors can get stuff that they want and you can get things that you want at a inexpensive price. So we started selling things like, clothes, unused gift cards. Nicole had a nice purse that she had in her closet that she hadn't used in five years. We sold that. I had a bike that I never used anymore because if we had kids and I couldn't get out of the house. I even had a moped that I had bought, you know, three or four years ago and it was just sitting in the garage. So just things like that. Yeah. We would sell that on Facebook marketplace or eBay and get some cash and we'd just throw it right at the mortgage. And we kept piling things down that would allow us to, you know, pay down the mortgage, but also still have fun in our lives. Um, I decided to start a small business just for fun. um, That was a, um, you know, sort of on a whim. Mm -hmm. Hey, I like personal finance. I like helping people with money. Why don't I write about it and start a podcast? I started listening to shows like L's and inspired me to do something exciting with, uh, with my time. And I've been able to make some money off of that. Mostly a lot of fun, but some money yeah. too. And with that, that's helped us to enjoy our lives a little bit better and, and um, you know, increase, increase my passion for something I'd li- I like to do. And then lastly, the major one is just getting excited and motivated to hit a goal uh, and uh, I did this through just increasing my income at work. So over the time that we side, decided to pay off the mortgage to today, um, I had an opportunity to switch to a new job that um, allowed me essentially to make an income that was a good year for me in sales at my previous job. So it was great. It was the stability mm-hmm. and, um, and then the income as well. So also when I kick Kick, kick some butt in my job because uh, I'm in sales. And if I exceed my goals, uh, which I love hitting goals, uh, I get I'm rewarded for it. Pattern here. <laughs> <laughs> Have I said that before? Um, and I, I, you know, I get rewarded for it. So again, when, when there's bonuses or promotions or things like that, that money would go towards the mortgage too. And that really helped us to, you know, increase our income to continue to hit our goals. Yes, having a great paying job is a huge plus. I'm not discounting that. 
But did you also notice that Andy took on extra work, both through his job and with the side gig? Here's where you have to adjust things to your situation. For some couples, putting in that overtime on a temporary basis is a good fit. They love what they do, and the pay can be fantastic. But that route may not work for you. It might be easier or better for your situation to look at a side or freelance gig. And this is becoming a more and more popular option as people are looking for flexible ways to earn money on the side. However you decide to do it is completely up to you. But if you're looking to knock out your mortgage, it's going to take big wins. And that means growing that gap between what you earn and what you spend. Finally, however fast you decide to pay your mortgage, it's going to be a journey. It's not overnight. So the two of you have to help each other out. Early on in our relationship, we started uh, a tradition which we called the budget party. And when I say we, it was really me. I, I came up with the idea of the name budget party mostly to lure my wife into to doing something that doesn't sound fun, but it can be freeing once you plan out what your um, what you know what your spending is, as well as you know what, talking about what your dreams are to say, hey, where do we want to go? What exciting things do we want to do? And we dubbed it the budget party. So we'd get some pizza, we'd have some beer and wine, and then as the kids started to come along, the 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 beer the beer and the wine <laughs> probably it actually increased a little bit just for sanity level. Um, no, no, I'm joking. Uh, but no, you do have to be inventive with that. So when the kids come along, you know you're not going to be able to sit at the kitchen table and just have you know calm quiet evening with your spouse you got to get inventive so for us we started going to like the local play place that had wi-fi so the kids would run around crazy while we're sitting there and working on our budget together um, we've gone to coffee shops we've even had date night where we bring the laptop and the receipt <laughs> at the restaurant and just kind of spread them all out on the night you know while we're there people look at us funny but we're like hey we're getting we're, we're getting things done and we're making yes. our marriage so for us yeah now getting together on the first of the month every month now for the past six or seven years has really made a major difference for us because it helps us get on the same page not only financially but mm -hmm. also just like uh, scheduling our marriage. What are the yeah. things that we're going to do this month? Whose birthdays are, uh, is it mm -hmm. this month? Is there a wedding coming up that we need to save some money up for to give a nice gift? You know, these are the times that we get together, especially when your parents, you need to sit down and just carve out a couple hours to plan out your, plan out your day, plan out your marriage, plan out the next 10 years, making sure you're heading in the right direction. Sometimes, you know, if, if you're not doing that, you, might, you could easily just kind of drift off into a direction that you both don't want to be in. So That's true. that focus time to do that has been really helpful for us. There's no denying it. Paying off your mortgage is a huge win, but it's not an easy battle. However, Andy has a great take on how the two of you can succeed. Take it one step at a time. I mean, really, it's, it's going to feel daunting in the beginning. It's going to feel not that easy. Uh, but when you break it down, um, and I think the main thing in the beginning is create a partnership with your spouse where you're able to openly talk about the numbers and utilize um, a budgeting system that's exciting and easy to use. And it really lays out the numbers for you. Once you see the numbers and the path, it becomes a lot easier and you just set a date, a realistic date that yeah. works for you and your spouse. And if it seems too aggressive, then lighten it up because you don't, you don't want to ruin the marriage based <laughs> on aggressive goals. I can tell you it's not worth it <laughs> from the aggressive goal back. Um, you know, find a balance that works for both of you because your spouse might not be as excited about something like this uh, as you are. Uh, if you've watched this whole video, I'm sure you're probably on the one, one side of the fence. But some, sometimes people have spouses that are, 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 are a spouse that is equally excited. So just finding that balance that works both for you and your spouse and finding a goal that you could both get excited about yeah. um, is the key. And I think that's a great place to start. If we're talking about marriage and, and money, this is, that's, the, that's the best place to start for me. Special thanks to Andy for being a part of this show. If you want to learn more about their journey to being debt-free and how they're working towards financial independence as a family, please head over to Marriage, Kids, and Money. Speaking of Andy, he and I, along with a couple other friends, are collaborating and have created a free Facebook community called Thriving Families. We share resources for helping each other out and thriving in our daily lives. As always, I'll include links to that as well as resources that can help you out and get started with your debt freedom journey. 
It's going to be over in the show notes at Couple Money. And if you're looking for more ideas on how to find, save, and make extra cash to pay down debt or use it for whatever goal you have, please sign up for my free 5 Days to 5K course. It's a week-long special email series that will help you find some extra money. Just head over to couplemoney.com slash 5K. Our theme song was written and performed by Gentle Regime, additional music by Lee Rosevere, and music for makers. Finally, and most importantly, thank you. Your support means so much. Thank you for sharing the episodes that have been incredibly helpful and sending me the emails. I love hearing about your wins. I hope you have a great week. Take care.